Welcome to Painting with Carmina. Today I'm going to be working on a painting of a character from a story I'm working on, a novel which I want to illustrate as well. And the cat is a very important character. As you can tell by his little official's hat, he is of very noble lineage. He is a Marquis, or he is in the family of a Marquis and he runs the whole household, hence the joke. It's a running joke in the story that he runs the entire household. As we know, all pets do in fact run the households and we are their servants. He is a Li Hua Mao. You can't actually, I didn't do any of the markings by um, with pencil or ink, so I'm going to have to paint them on, which I'm very nervous about, but we'll try. And so I want to get started today before I lose daylight. I'm very close to losing daylight, so I won't get a lot done, but I want to get started just on the earliest stages of painting him. And I'm just getting a few different colors here to start on a base coat for his fur, a very light base coat, and then I'll start painting him in more detail later. I do have a reference, do have some reference pictures of this type of cat to make sure that he looks half decent. I'm a little worried about getting paint near my phone though. <laughs> How do I arrange my phone so that it does not get painted on? Here we are. Okay, so I'm just gonna be doing this base coat for now and then I'm pretty much going to run out of daylight today. It's getting a little bit dark. Wait, that's my skin tone color, that's not good. Might wanna mix a color in here. All right, here we are, that's that look. I think we need more of a creamy color. It's funny, I used to be all, I hate mixing paints, and now I keep doing it anyway. I, I don't know, don't ask me. Mm, it seems too yellow. You see, this is actually very difficult. Okay, I think what I might do is actually wet him and then add some paint um, to get that first very light base coat. I kind of been looking for there is white on the Li Hua Mao, although I'm probably going to struggle to keep that white space. But I'll try to keep a few areas that are very, very transparent. I don't always do this where I wet the paper first and then I paint, but let's try it this time. Here's a slightly darker cat in my reference pictures. I have a lot of reference pictures I keep on my phone and bring to my table to paint with. So let's just start with I think this cream color, and I have another creamy color here. Oh, I like that cream color, actually. It's kind of a flesh tone, but it's okay. It, it'll, when, it's, when we have all the brown and cream layers, it'll be natural. And actually, he does need the flesh tone in the corner here, so that's fine. He does need a more pink cream here in his ears. So, just gonna keep working on this, adding just a very light creamy base coat, as said. The goal here is more to, oh, that, that will work. The goal is to just create a very light, light base coat to then paint darker colors on for his markings and all of that. I'm a little nervous that some of these are too creamy or like flesh tony, I guess, but we'll see. They are just the base coat, and it's meant to be quite a light base layer to just put everything else over, the fur texture and all of that. Okay, let's look at a kitty face. I really like this one. That is gorgeous. Um, so yeah, I need something a bit more brownish. I'm so worried about it looking too dirty, but let's try that. That's too much, too much. Some browns I find um, in my paint sets look very orange when they get um, diluted, which I'm not very excited about, but let's find a darker brown for that then. Yeah, I don't normally do a lot of wet on wet, but this is actually quite fun. As long as I don't screw it up and do too much. It's more reddish, which wasn't quite what I wanted, but that is okay. I'm gonna buff it out and we'll just live with it. This is my first experiment with painting this little boy, so I may make some mistakes. I haven't fully decided on every color I want. All right, I do have like a proper brown here, which doesn't have the reddish undertones. Let's get some of that. That's much better. Why didn't I use that before? All right, 
right. That's much better. Perfect. Okay. It's okay though because he has some blossoms in the background. We'll just pretend that the sky is at the right level, but he would have some pinkish tones on his shading. <laughs> there you see, excuses. All right, I think that's about it for the cat for now because I want to just wait for all of these layers to dry. And that means that I'm going to be working for a second, since I have a bunch of browns out anyway, on the tree branch. And I am actually going to play with the whole wet on wet concept for this one and do a little more of that. Oh, this is actually quite fun. Um, only problem is if I get to the wet outside of the inclines, then we'll get some very odd positions for it, but that's okay. So this is just the first layer and I can work more on it later. I'm actually doing some of this painting in real time. I didn't plan on that. I usually try to be a bit more careful with that because I'm a babbler, but you know what? Let's talk about it. Ooh, I like that. And actually it's really fun to watch this in real time. I really need to do more wet on wet. This is fun. I think for backgrounds it's nice because it's very organic. Whereas for a full painting, the problem you have with wet on wet, with details I mean, then it doesn't really work. But for just these background areas, this is actually really fun. I'm enjoying it. Okay. But now I need to get into some of these tight areas and just fill them in with this tiny brush. I need another tiny brush, which is just slightly bigger than this one. And here we are. Ooh, nice. I do want this to be a quick painting. I'm just going to kind of experiment, play around with it, have fun, and learn a few things, and then move on to a new painting. So continuing in my vein of stop overworking your watercolor paintings. Does anyone else have that problem that they just kind of work too much on their watercolors and they wind up just kind of overdoing it and it doesn't really work? Because that is definitely a problem I have with watercolor. That's a struggle to make the right colors that I want, <laughs> but I suppose everyone does. I am not someone who's very good at color mixing, and this is something I've probably talked about before, but I'm very, 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 very bad at it. But so far, I think this is looking cute, and I probably just need to wait for stuff to dry, so that's about it. Yep, I, was, I can't do anything right now. If I tried to put stripes on, we'd have no definition. If I try to paint the flowers, well, I suppose I could paint these flowers, but it's fine. I don't have the pink paint out. So there we are. It's going to be quite a simple painting, as I've said. So I've already made some progress on it and I am now losing daylight. <laughs> so I can't record anymore. All right.
Okay, so I am at a sort of a pause point in the painting and I wanted to talk a little bit about certain things which um, I'm not entirely happy with. I started trying to do the striping on Weibao's coat before I really had enough base layers down because the Li Hua Mao actually has a lot of color variety in their coat. Some of them are very creamy. I don't know if you can see the reference picture here, but some of them are very creamy and some of them have more gray and it was just going straight into the dark striping when I only had the cream base coat and I didn't have all of the other colors in yet was not really working. So I started going back and adding more base colors which were more gray and creating more color variety. And now I need to sort of take stock a little, and I sort of had to take stock and think about what I wanted to do because I didn't layer it very well. But I think I'm taking it back and I'm managing to fix some of what I think went wrong. So that's good. It's very difficult to sort of have that moment where you go, oh, I actually didn't really quite do this right, did I? This is worrying. And so now I think I'm taking it back and fixing some of the things which I wasn't really happy with. So that's good. Um, sometimes I make a mistake and I can't save it, but I think that I took stock and I kind of worked on the thing that I'm not happy with in time. Now I want to do a few other touches around Weibao before I get back to his markings. So one of the things I want to do is his eyes and his eyes are green. Looks like this cat has green eyes. So I'm going to start with a lighter color and then I can always add more darker highlights later or highlights, shadows later, but it's sort of a green. It's gonna be a little more yellowish once it fades, but that's okay. I think a lot of green-eyed cats do have a yellowish tone to the green eye. It's sort of like a green, or I've seen so much are green and so much are golden, so something which is in between the two is fine. And the other thing I want to do as well as his eyes, which I'm done now, I need to wait for them to fade, is I need to get my paint for the flowers. Here we are, I have some very nice pink paint colors in here, and I'm always just, I have a million paint tins and I have to keep sorting through them to find the colors I need. Here we are. I also have some red here, which I want to do for some of the more shadowy tones. So, there we are. I'm gonna add, I'm just gonna wet the paint first, and then I can add different tones to the pink when I'm waiting on that. And yeah, I think that I'm sort of doing a decent job of taking stock of where I'm at and trying to sort of fix things that I'm not entirely happy with, which is great. It can be a little tricky to say, oh, I'm not happy with where this is going, let's try to fix it. And I think I've done a decent job this time of doing that, so that's great. It, it, that's something I'm trying to also learn is to take stock of where I'm at with certain paintings and take pauses and try to figure out how to sort of fix them. Let's see. There are a lot of types of plum blossoms and I didn't really decide what color I wanted to go with. Um, I might, just to have some more interest in the painting, might go with a more reddish type. There are a lot of different varieties which have different colors and I'm kind of thinking of going with one which is a bit more reddish with maybe like a sort of creamy center. I think I kind of like that. And the creamy center could also have a little bit of a golden tone. So I just want to kind of like, just trying to think about what color variety I want. So actually, I might want to do something a little different. I was originally thinking of doing something more like a very, Um, pink one, but now I'm kind of like actually Weibao's kind of dark. He has like pretty dark fur I think that some darker flowers with him will be nice especially because this doesn't have a lot of background So if I just do like light colors, then this is going to be a very light um, This is going then the flowers won't stand out in comparison to Weibao who has very dark fur Because you can see the striping eventually is going to be very dark So I do want more color variety than that. All right I'm at the point where I have to wait for these to dry. I know I'm always just like, oh yeah, I have to wait for this to dry now. Watercolor is kind of funny that way. There is a lot of just waiting for things to dry in between actual painting. It's quite funny. Um, I don't know why I say it's funny. It's just, it is something which, you know, you wouldn't quite think of in, 
is that you do really tiny little steps and then you stop painting and then you get back to it. And this is not meant to have a full background. I just want to create some sort of like shadows around Weibao so that he doesn't look like he's floating in space, but it's not meant to be a fully detailed background. I need to look this up. There was a Chinese artist who does beautiful cat paintings, which um, inspired me a lot. And I'm going to, before I record the next um, audio segment, I'll look up her name and check. Or I'll put her name up here. Let's see, do I want this to be, I don't really want it to be gray. Okay, where should he be? I didn't think of this, I really should have. <laughs> All right, let's just do brown. No, no, no. Actually, let's do one of these more earthy greens. There we are, color variety. If I just do more brown underneath him, that doesn't look very exciting, does it? So I think actually I should do one of these more earthy greens, but just a little bit. So it's kind of like he's on the grass. Maybe with some brown as well, so that it's not too, but yeah, it looks more natural. Here we are, I like that actually. And so I'm doing wet on wet for this. And I think this looks nice. It's just meant to give him some sort of sense of place, but not too much. He's not like, it's not like a full garden. It's not a fully detailed background. It just gives some sense that he's not sitting in space in nothingness, but it's not a fully detailed background either. So I think this is perfect. Do I want maybe a little more green? Maybe just a little more green in some of these spots so that it doesn't look like dirt. I want it to look a little more earthy, but green. All right, I like that. Okay, so here we are. And at this point, um, I'm going to have to wait for things to dry again. I know, very exciting. I always kind of joke about that. It is really quite funny because that is something I do a lot with watercolors. I just, I do really thin layers and then wait for them to dry. So at this point, I need to wait for this to dry and then I can come back and do more work. But here we are. I, that was something I did want to talk about in my own ambly, rambly way that I wasn't entirely happy with certain things and I wanted to take stock and pull back and try to kind of fix them. And moving away from the cat for a bit and working on a few background elements was really helpful too to think about the color composition. So there we are. Now I need to wait for this to dry and then I'm gonna come back and do more of the flowers and start again on Weibao's fur and get more work on that. I can probably at this point start on some darker stripes, so that'll be great. So just wait for this to dry and then I'll come back to it and get back to work in a bit. When it's dry, I actually find that watercolor takes quite a while to dry in my apartment sometimes, longer than I'd expect, probably because it's very cool in here, but that's fine.
All right, so I am at the very last step on this painting, so it's a good time to chat a little bit about how the painting's gone and the last things I'm doing. So I mentioned earlier that I was inspired by a Chinese artist to um, with some of the composition. It doesn't my work doesn't look anything like hers, and I'm definitely not as good as her. But I was inspired by Gu Yingzhu's art. I'll um, link in the description to um, a website with paintings of hers. She's a very famous Chinese artist who's done a lot of very gorgeous paintings of cats. And I was just inspired by the, her composition, the way she would implement sort of a subtle background, but a lot of the time the focus was on just on the cat, and I really liked that. So I just wanted to mention the artist I was inspired by with this. It's important to look at, you know, inspirations and what you um, are looking for in your paintings, and I was just looking for a brush. <laughs> and so I just wanted to mention that. And overall, I say I like this a fair bit. It's not perfect, but I do like it. And at this stage, I just want to add a little bit of a sky background. This is obviously very different to the artist I was inspired by, not the same type of painting, but it was an inspiration of mine because I liked her composition. And so I want just a little bit of a background, but I don't want it to be a detailed background. So this is kind of what I went with. And I think having some of a sky effect up here, then fading into the white is nice. So that it's not just all white space. There's these hints of a background, but they're sort of not fully detailed and important. I think I actually used the wrong side of this watercolor paper. Um, I had done an earlier sketch on the other side of a paper which didn't work out and then I reversed the paper and I think that it didn't quite take the paint exactly the same as on the reverse side. Um, but that's okay. I still like how this came out. And it was a fun little painting to work on. I had a lot of fun painting Wei Bao. He is a very cute cat. I just, I love um, stories about naughty pets, honestly. And this cat is very chubby, as you can see, and he's a very, very naughty cat. He yells at everyone for food and is a complete nightmare. And he's a very precious baby boy and his mistress won't hear any insults to him. You're not allowed to call him fat. You're not allowed to say that he's badly behaved because he is perfect, of course. He might have been inspired by my family's dog who, um, is like that. My mother will insist that she is a precious angel up and down no matter how badly behaved she is. So I really was inspired by that. Look, he looks so sweet and innocent. You'd never suspect that he'd stand there yowling at you for food all day and night, right? No, he's perfect. All right, so let's see, a little bit more blue in the corner maybe, just a little bit. And here we are. All right, I think that's about it. I don't want to overwork the painting and I think that at this stage, this is fine. Unfortunately, I have some pencil marks here that couldn't fully erase, but that's okay. So here we are. This is a nice little practice piece. I've never painted this cat before and it was really fun. I did have a few periods where, for instance, I started with um, doing striping earlier on in the painting and then I went, oh no, this isn't working. I'm doing this at the wrong time. I don't have enough base layers built up to add the stripes yet. And then I sort of took it back and managed to fix that a bit. So I'm really actually quite pleased that I managed to take stock and pause and say, hey, this isn't working. How can I fix this? And I did. It's not perfect, but I definitely managed to take back a few mistakes and clean it up and I'm pretty proud of that. I think that's um, very important is to sort of take a pause and say, hey, how's this going? And then fix it. Um, one of my brushes just fell. <laughs> that's okay. So I feel like I did a decent job with that. And that's something to keep in mind in the future is to have these points where you take a pause, you take a breather and say, okay, what's going on with painting? Is there anything I'm unhappy with? How can I fix it? Etc. And I feel like I did that in this painting. I managed to take stock, stock and take breaks and say, hey, this isn't working, this is working, and stuff like that. And overall, I feel like it came out pretty well. I think it's cute, and there are definitely things I could do better in the future, but I'm pretty happy with it. So I hope that you enjoyed watching this, and you'll consider joining me again next time when I work on a new painting. Thank you, and until next time, bye.